What's up, folks? Tonight, we're going to talk about dynamics and the limiter. And those things are opposing forces. So, if you're not familiar with what dynamics or dynamic music is, uh, I can give you some examples. And for one would be the original score to Star Wars, the intro, and all the music, actually. Uh, another example would be like Pink Floyd, The Wall. Dynamic music or dynamic sound is where you have quiet parts and loud crescendos. And the music level goes up and down. Now this is a very dynamic little groove I put together in uh, Magic's Music Maker and I loaded it onto Audacity. And you can see the dynamic peaks in this track. There's a lot going on down here. A little bit going on up here and all different levels of music going on throughout the track and it sounds like this now when the pianos come in here in a minute you'll hear they're kind of subdued See how they're in the background? Alright, so now I'm going to apply a limiter to this to this track. And uh where the heck did it go? There it is down there. Now on this limiter. You can see the input gain and the input gain in DB, mono left and mono right, and the amount to limit. So we're limiting negative 4.10 DB. And the hold is the amount of time. So if we want to do that, let's set the input gain at, well, I'll just pick a random number here at 2 on both channels and we'll leave it set with its, with its preset and we'll hit OK and you see what happened to the music okay now these softer parts up here became louder the louder parts became softer and listen to the difference <laughs> Hear how loud that cymbal crash was? You hear how much louder the piano was when it came in? The piano is kind of overwhelming now, right? guitar has lost its bite. Now we're going to go back to what it sounded like before and we're going to play it again. Hear how much more dynamic the drums are? Now let's do an even more extreme version of that so that you can uh, see what happens when you get carried away with it. <coughs> that was actually a uh, reasonably soft limit. So let's turn this sucker up. Alright, now now we're looking at flat. See this? 
This is where the music's being cut off. All the soft parts are getting cranked and the loud parts are getting cut big time. <laughs> Symbols way loud. Man, that don't even sound right at all, actually. The drums are cut big time. So that's what happens when you use an limiter. Now is it better than distortion? Uh, yeah, I guess so, but it's definitely not ideal. Um, but having a limiter in place, a lighter limiter, to uh, fix any potential clipping would be a big deal. So if we zoom in on this, let's go back to edit and undo the limiter. And we'll zoom in tight so you guys can see what's up. Get the frequencies really big. Now here's our frequency, right? There's actually two frequencies going on here. So this will be a bass frequency. And riding on that frequency is the other high frequency. So there's multiple layers of them. But anything that goes outside of this line right up here is a clip. So we're getting really close to clipping. Um, which whenever I recorded this, I... The levels on it, I pushed it right to the edge so that it wouldn't clip, but it would also be um, very, uh, very close. Just mainly for this little experiment. So that is not a clip, but of course in this, in this software, we can actually fix a clip if we have one. <coughs> so we just highlight it and go into clip fix and you can tell it how much of a threshold to allow the percentage and how much you want it to reduce the amplitude right here to fix that clip and then you say okay and it'll go through the clip fix process and we definitely shrunk it but if you look at the difference in the way this looks it didn't bring up all the lows and bring down all the highs it reduced the overall amplitude of everything to make sure it's nowhere near clipping so this will still sound very natural if not a little quieter and essentially what the way you fix the uh, clipping problem is you just turn the volume down. <laughs> so a limiter is kind of like a cheat for not turning the volume down. Um, again, it's, it's not ideal. This right here is still a nice, clean, pretty dynamic signal. Meaning it's got all this information stored way down low and quiet and louder parts. So it sounds alive like a, like a real piece of music should. I added another track that I worked on uh, yesterday. We'll mute that one. Uh, actually, we'll just delete that one. We'll delete that track. So, this is the track I worked on yesterday uh, for uh, YouTube music purposes. And we'll zoom in a little bit on it. I want to go ahead and highlight it, and we'll zoom in on it to have a look at what's going on in this in this track. We're gonna start out right here. So nice and dynamic. The, if the music world today had their hands on this, they would change that. <coughs> Actually, we don't want to do clip fix because that we're doing. 
we're going to do another uh, limiter. And we're just going to leave it set where we had it last time. And watch how, how dynamic this goes to, to complete like spaghetti noodles. It's just... <laughs> All the nice subtle keyboard in the background and all that stuff is you hear how the drum is completely subdued and all the little subtle sounds in the background are really loud it just sounds I mean wow listen to that part right there And, and now let me go back to it again and undo that limiter, play that same piece. This is something that we don't see much of anymore because pretty much everything today is compressed or modulated in such a way that the peaks are the same level as the quiet places. And uh, there's actually a little bit of a history to that. And I'll give you the, the quick version. The uh, recording industry kind of had a volume war uh, toward the end of the 80s it kind of started and into the 90s a little bit and in the 2000s it really ramped up and what happened was they realized that music that was louder a song that was louder tended to get played more often people liked it better because if you're listening to this song and this song and this song and all of a sudden this song comes on and it's really cranking the volume, it's like, oh, wow, bam, you're going to rock on. So when that happened, they started pushing the levels of everything up. Um, and in order to do that, they had to bring all the instruments up. They had to create an entire recording that had a volume level that was very consistent across the top because there was no room for that dynamic sound to happen. If you look at your EQ, for example, you'll see that there's a zero line in the middle, and then there's a plus and minus. Okay, anytime you're going up over the plus, you're pushing, a, pushing closer and closer to the point to where you'll clip a signal. So if you have a dynamic track that's playing and uh, and you have the volume cranked up to where that quiet part is, you know, right in the, in the hot spot of where your, your stereo can play without clipping and all of a sudden you have crescendos, big loud parts, it actually goes up into clipping. Uh, and whenever you're mastering a recording, they master it at that zero level, that zero dB level. And so that whenever you're playing the music, you have room above that level for music to go up and down and not clip. There's a certain amount of decibels above that zero line that you can bounce before you clip. I'm trying to keep this simple. It's a, the explanation is far more complicated, but I'm keeping it very simple. So, when a recordings, uh, when studios were recording music back in the 60s and 50s and 70s, they kept the volume overall kind of low so that their crescendos wouldn't go above the peak. Well, whenever you're making the overall volume of the music much louder, getting it up close to that zero, you're not leaving much room for those crescendos to be able to go up, you know, those peaky, peaky sounds without clipping so you have to squish them down okay that's what we're talking about today so a limiter is a system that looks for those peaks that are going to go past clipping and crushes them if you guys enjoyed the video please hit that subscribe button and drop me a comments in the video 
share this video share all my videos share any video i have with your friends on your facebook or on whatever if you need somebody or want somebody to learn something new uh, maybe i got been asking questions about something that i've covered in one of my videos i would love to have that information be able to be shared with everybody and uh for now guys peace